One of the greatest difficulties that the ordinary choir master has to face is that of setting before his choir some standard at which they may aim in their rendering of the music of the church service. The choir master, provided he has the necessary qualifications, can teach his choir to sing the notes correctly and to produce their voices properly, though even in these cases a sound model is useful. But no system of notation has been invented which can convey to a choir the subtle difference between a performance which is merely correct and one which is musically satisfying. It is here that the gramophone can give so much help. Not only does it provide an accurate rendering of the notes, but it furnishes at least an indication of points of style such as phrasing, diction and expression. It is of the greatest value for a choir to hear music which it is learning or with which it is already familiar as sung by another choir. The singers can not only listen to the record, but they can sing quietly with it. This method will often teach more in a few minutes than can be imparted in a long explanation. The records issued by the School of English Church Music are mainly intended for use in this way, so they deal principally with the simplest parts of the service, which often receive the least attention, though they generally re require the most. Especially do they aim at showing the treatment of words which are not set to measured music, such as the psalms, canticles and responses. The principle governing the treatment of all such parts of the service should be freedom in the music, so that the words may be recited just as they would be in clear speech, without distortion or false accents. This principle often involves reconsideration of accustomed methods. For instance, the first two verses of the Magnificat would naturally be read thus, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. Sung according to the old system, we should get this. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. Now listen to the new system, in which the music is free from any feeling of strict time. You will notice that exactly the same syllables receive the main emphasis in singing as when the words are spoken. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. Again, the old system required that the so-called reciting note should always occupy at least two beats, even though the syllable allotted to it might be quite short and unaccented. This is the sort of thing we are all accustomed to hear in the Nantimitis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. You notice the false accent on the first syllable of according. The new system rejects this sort of thing and we get quite naturally. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. In some verses there are not enough syllables to fit all the notes of the chant. This applies especially to the second half of verses where the chant has six notes. The new system gets over such difficulties by treating the whole chant as one phrase without requiring that the double bar should correspond with the colon. Now listen to these two examples, sung first in the old way and then in the new. From the tedium, According to the old plan, we believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. Now the new system. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. Another example from Psalm 49. The old plan. High and low, rich and poor, one with another. Now the new way. High and low, rich and poor, one with another. 
For the same reason that there are not enough syllables available, an accent is sometimes placed on a naturally weak syllable, such as an unemphatic pronoun, so that the sense is spoilt. As, for instance, in the Venite, by the old system, we get this. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. The new system brings out the sense better. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. In the record of Psalm 15, you will hear a short verse at the end, which is fitted by using only half the chant. In the Tedium and the Nantimitis, you will notice cases where two short verses are grouped together to one repetition of the chant. The responses are given in a simple form, and like the psalms, they should be sung in speech rhythm and not in strict time. The setting of the creed in the communion service is the serum form of the ancient traditional melody that was sung everywhere in old days, fitted to the English words. It may be sung without accompaniment, and the natural rhythm of the words should as far as possible be preserved. The sersum corda and preface are likewise sung to the proper serum inflections. The remaining records need no explanation. They serve to complete the music for all the ordinary services of the church.